I'm continuing my reading once again, and what I'm doing in the series is to read through the entire standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This consists of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I'm reading in chronological order of events, not according to publication or volume, so I will be skipping around a little bit as I move along. Right now, I am in the Book of Exodus. This will be chapter 35. Sabbath observance enjoined upon Israel. Free gifts offered for the tabernacle. Call and inspiration of certain artisans confirmed. And Moses gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel together and said unto them, These are the words which the Lord hath commanded that ye should do them. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day there shall be, <clears throat> there shall be to you an holy day, a Sabbath of rest to the Lord. Whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. And that's an interesting one. You can't even light a fire. Because the idea of the Sabbath, originally, as it is in the Law of Moses, wasn't just to give men rest. It was to give the land rest, the animals. So you're also giving the wood rest, in a sense. Verse 4. And Moses spake unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, Take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord, whosoever is of a willing heart. Let him bring it an offering of the Lord, gold and silver and brass, and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair and ram skins dyed red and badger skins and shittim wood. and oil for the light, and spices for anointing oil, and for the sweet incense, and onyx stones, and stones to be set for the ephod, and for the breastplate, and every wise hearted, every wise -hearted among you shall come and make all that the Lord hath commanded, the tabernacle, his tent, and his covering, his tatches, and his boards, and his bars, his pillars, and his sockets, the ark, and the staves thereof, with the mercy seat, and the veil of the covering, the table and his staves and all his vessels and the shewbread, the candlestick also for the light and his furniture and his lamps with the oil of the light and the incense altar and his staves and the anointing oil and the sweet incense and the hanging of the and the hanging for the door and the entering in of the tabernacle, the altar of burnt offering with his bra with his brazen grate, his staves and all his vessels, the laver and his foot the hangings of the court, his pillars and, the, and their sockets, and the hanging of the, for the door of the court, the pins of the tabernacle and the pins of the court and their cords, the clothes of service to do service in the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron, and, uh, Aaron the priest, and the garments for his sons to minister in the priest's office. So this is just a rundown of everything they're making. We don't need to go into any detail there. Verse 20. And all the congregation of the children of Israel departed from the presence of Moses, and they came every one whose heart stirred him up, and every one whom his spirit made willing, and they brought the Lord's offering to the work of the tabernacle of the congregation, and for all his service, and for the holy garments. And they came, both men and women, as many as were willing-hearted, and brought bracelets, and earrings, and rings, and tablets, all jewels of gold, and every man that offered, offered an offering of gold unto the Lord. And every man with whom was found blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair and red, and red skins of rams and badger skins brought them. Every one that did offer an offering of silver and brass brought the Lord's offering. And every man with whom was found shittim wood for any work of the service brought it. And all the women that were wise hearted did spin with their hands and brought that which they had spun, both of blue and of purple and of scarlet and of fine linen. And all the women whose heart was stirred them up in wisdom spun goat's hair. And the rulers brought onyx stones and stones to be set for the ephod and for the breastplate and spice and oil for the light and for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense. The children of Israel brought a willing offering unto the Lord. Every man and woman whose heart made them willing to bring for all manner of work which the Lord had commanded to be made by the hand of Moses. Now, they emphasize this a lot. It was a willing offering. None of these people were forced. Moses wasn't going out into the camp and taking stuff for the work of the Lord. He, uh, he asked for donations, and people came. And you'll also note, there's a, you know, the men brought the gold and the silver. 
They brought the skins of animals. The women brought the linen they spun. They made the cloth and brought it to Moses. It was the rulers or the elders. These were the presiding officers. They were the elders of each tribe. They're the ones that brought the gems and the spices, those things that were uh, rarer and more valuable. They came from the elders. Each part of society brought their own offering. So I find that very interesting that they make that distinction. It wasn't just, oh, they brought all this stuff. It was the men brought what was under the men. You know, the men brought what they had. They were the smiths. They were the uh, woodsmen. They brought the, the metal. They brought this gold, the silver, the brass, the wood, the animal skins, because they were the hunters. The women being in the home, they spun the cloth. They brought the linen. The rulers, having the money, brought the spices and the gemstones. Very interesting distinctions being made here. But let us continue. Verse 30. And Moses said unto the children of Israel, See, the Lord hath called by name Bezaleel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And he hath filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, and in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship, and to devise curious works, to work in gold, and in silver, and in brass, and in the cutting of stones, to set them, and in, and in carving of wood, to make any manner of cunning work. And he hath put in his heart that he may teach both he and Aholiab, the son of Ahissamach of the tribe of Dan. Them hath he filled with wisdom of heart to work all manner of work of the engraver and of the cunning workman and of the embroiderer in blue and in purple and in scarlet and in fine linen and of all the weaver, even of them that do any work and of these that devise cunning work and of those that devise cunning work. Okay. So again, the same guys are being, but you know, Put it in his heart that he may teach. So again, as I mentioned before, they didn't do the work all by themselves. They were the overseers. They instructed others. They showed others how to do it. And they worked with a team to build all these things. Now it says, Bezalel, son of, Hur, uh, son of, Uri, son of Uri, the son of Hur. I wonder if that's the same Hur that held up the hands of Moses when they fought the Amalekites. And he was the same one that uh, Moses put in charge with Aaron when he went into the when he went into the mountain. He put Aaron and her in charge of Israel. So I'm just flipping back to a previous chapter here. It doesn't state whether it is. It probably is. So it's his grandson. So we don't really know anything about her. He just kind of appears on the scene as a, you know, we have we have Moses, Aaron, and her. Kind of president, vice president, or president and first and second counselor in a way. But we don't really know anything about her. It, what we do see here, apparently, Bezalel, who was one or even I would say the main overseer of the work of the tabernacle was his grandson. Very interesting tidbits of information that were never given full detail on. But anyways, we're going to leave that here and we'll see you in the next video.